Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. To Melangohai, Liberile, Abshane, Ready Made Sabahait. It is Tuesday evening, the time of fellowship for us ACDP members and supporters while we are sharing ideas about what has been happening, what is happening, and what will be happening in the near future. We want you informed. Remember Hosea 4, 6 says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You are getting information that you should share with your friends and fellow ACDP members so that we are not ignorant. Knowledge is power. As you are informed, you become more knowledgeable, you become cleverer, and you know that the enemy cannot play tricks with you, and you are not easily deceived by people who uh, specialize with lying and deceiving those without knowledge. So it's a good evening to you tonight, and my co-pilot is here with me who is also smiling here next to me, a happy man, a happy husband, a happy father, Evo. happy MP and everything else. Evo. <laughs> the Lord bless you, say, yeah. it's time to say hello to our friends. Well, good evening and greetings, and thank you again for tuning in to our discussion that we have uh, every Tuesday. I pray that it's been informative for you, and as our president indicated, it's an opportunity for each one of us to learn. What we share, I believe that you are able to glean from and learn from. And then with some of the questions that you present, we learn from it as well. So it's a learning process for all of us. Uh -huh. And so invite your friends, invite your family, uh, and stay tuned to a very informative uh, session this evening as we share uh, from our hearts and what's on our hearts tonight uh, so that you and we uh, can learn together. Uh, and so remember that the ACDP is needed by South Africa. South Africa needs the ACDP, ACDP. and the ACDP needs you. That's the you. very good one that you yeah. must all remember. South Africa needs the ACDP. Those who are still talking about ACDP being that small party that we should not take seriously, that you must ignore friends, they are going to eat their words yeah. next year after yeah. the elections. The ACDP yeah. is God's vehicle. That is for That's sure. Right. What he wants to do and what he's going to do in South Africa, he's going to do it with the ACDP. So the Lord bless you. Greetings. Who's the first one to say? Greetings to the ACDP family. Ah, you need a medal. We <laughs> must give you a medal. Gus van der Beel Map. Good evening, Mr. President, Honorable Deputy President Wayne Thring, and my fellow ACDP family. Greetings to you from Port Shepstein. Bernard Hathrell from KZN. Good evening, uh, President and Deputy President Wayne Thring from Durban, North Bernard and Joanne Hathrell. Good evening and good to have you. Deirdre DeForce. Good evening, everyone from sunny Central Way, Africa. <laughs> Where's uh, the Central what? Yeah. We have a central in Johannesburg. We have a central in Pretoria. We have a central in Africa. Okay? We'll come back to you. Let's let's know. And this. Jamil, uh, Jamil Isup, councillor in KZN, Durban, Etiquini. Good evening, Honourable President, Deputy President, and ACDP family. Looking forward to another night of solutions. Yes, to South Africa's challenges. Well said, Jamil. Night of solutions. Nora Mali Tiniko. Good evening, Honorable President, Co-Pilot, and ACDP family. And Tlikliso Mputi, Shalom, Shalom Leadership, Kurleni, greetings. <laughs> shalom, Shalom. Yes, Shalom, 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 Shalom. So good to have you with us tonight. And where are we going to start tonight? I think we'll continue with the worrying and concerning issue of people eating rotten food, yeah. 
poison food and the uh, government doing nothing about it. Mm. When people complain, then they rise up mm. and say we're doing something. When they hear about children dying because of eating biscuits that were bought from a shop, spaza shops owned by a foreign national, then they wake up and they mm. are seen going there. And after a few days, a few weeks, they go back to sleep. Mm. I must say, friends, this is going to be a major uh, election issue that the ACDP is going to raise. There is no one. We are going to see some visuals. People are losing their lives. Mm. People's lives are shortened because they are eating poison. And if government does not do anything about it, we must do something about it. Sure. ACDP is going to do something about it. When we campaign, you go to townships, you must have this information and tell them government is doing nothing. These people who come, they have bought out South Africans. Mm -hmm. How many South Africans are owning spaza shops today? And I know that South Africans are not allowed to sleep mm -hmm. in a place where they sell food. They are not allowed, mm -hmm. but they are allowing these guys. Why? Did they give them money? Were they bribed? Why are they allowing them? We are not sure. Now, the ACDP will ensure that we have enough inspectors. Yeah. There will be health inspectors mm -hmm. who will make sure that nobody sleeps in the house or in a shop where they're selling. Actually, when the inspectors are busy doing their job, they should find out where do you stay. Bring the permit, bring the address, tell us where you stay because nobody's allowed to, to sleep in the shop. Mm -hmm. And if they lie, they say, no, we go, and we know that they're not lying. The police will have to be there from 5, 4 or 5 a.m. in the morning mm. to see who's coming to open the shop. So we are serious about dealing with corruption and criminality. So we are going to watch a short video about something that appeared on television. It could be a week or two weeks ago on ETV. We saw how the police raided a warehouse where some food was so high up to the roof in the warehouse that the health inspectors who came said, this is unhealthy because if food is so close to the roof, it means all the heat is messing up what is in the food. But the more concerning was to see bags of millimeter that are opened. What were they going to put in those bags of millimeter? That's what we want to know. So let's watch and see what happened. And this happened, I think it's, it was in Rodeoport in the Johannesburg area. Those found on the wrong side of the law. Police are taking the fight against crime and corruption to the source. A huge warehouse in which fake food and goods are produced and repackaged was raided earlier today in Rodeoport. Our uh, reporter, Shonim Timkulu, brings us the latest on this. We are at a warehouse in Rudiport where there are uh, goods that are sold to spaza shops are stocked here. And already just from the beginning of us being here, we can really see that there is an issue around dating. Uh, this maize meal, the manjo maize meal, the expiry date that we're seeing is the 26th of September, which is essentially a month ago. And you have to wonder what will be happening with it, if it's going to be sold, who is it going to be sold to, how, you know, and what's going to happen with it. So, you know, we've heard of expired goods. We've heard of uh, children dying from eating these things. So you have to wonder if this is here now, are there other goods as well that are in this sort of situation? We are going to take a little walk just to show you where there is a, a room where they are prepackaging or repurposing, repackaging uh, flour as well. So we're just going to walk in. Oh, it's maize meal that's being repackaged. So Super Life is meant to be the brand that is uh, the manufacturer of this maize meal. But as you can see, uh, the owners of the shop are able to open it. And we've seen flies here as well. They're able to open it. They then repackage it and then they seal it again. So we don't know where, how they seal it, but... Um, the inspectors that were here did suggest that they probably reseal it on, the, on their own. I'm just going to bring in uh, General Mavela. There was also washing powder that we saw earlier. I'm not sure if that uh, package is still around here. But just General Mavela, maybe we can just talk to you about the state of what we are seeing here at the moment. This can't be right that this is open. This seemingly they're doing it themselves. How is that even, you know, possible? 
Yeah, um, thank you very much for the opportunity we are given. Uh, because of the public outcry about how um, the people who are selling food, whether uh, spaza shops, tuck shops, corner shops, and uh, uh, the way they are complaining that uh, the housekeeping of those food is not up to standard. So with Operation Chanela in Gauteng, we decided that now moving forward, uh, we need to add an activity whereby we are going to do the compliance inspection in premises like this. And then what we have done, we have roped in the environmental health inspectors, people who have a knowledge as to how the housekeeping must look like in premises like this. So um, what we have found here and the briefing I got from the uh, inspectors here is that the housekeeping is not in order, it's not in accordance to the regulations. Uh, you have also seen, you know, how things have been packed up to the roof level. So they are exposed to the heat and then um, this is what they are saying. And they were also saying that you can't pack flour and oil at the same place or liquid stuff and whatever and we have seen that they just pack randomly and so forth um, so for now we will say that uh, uh, the health inspectors they say they are going to close down this shop thank you so much lieutenant general okay that's very concerning you have open bags of millimil and powdered soap yeah. close by Mm. She could not identify, but she said earlier she saw piled that soap where that food was or where that millimil was. Mm. Okay, so that mm. is not right. ACDP will make sure, and it is a promise that I will make. Mm. ACDP will make sure that that does not happen. If put this package wherever, you remove the packaging or you transfer or change the packaging that should be a criminal offense to ensure that people's lives are protected. When those bags of millimeter were open, do you know that they can put anything in those bags? Anything they want. Poison, slow poison, they can easily mm. put it in there. And those from the township, they know kalipirimi. There is something you put in food stuff. They say before sunset, you go. <laughs> Before sunset, you go. Okay? The DP told me about something he saw happening in India. Please let the people know. It's happening. Uh, and governments are allowing it to happen. Why? Maybe they've been bright. Well, we had a visitor president to our to our church uh, a, few, a few months ago. And uh, this visitor was from, from India. They were looking at setting up, uh, you know, some dairy farming because the, 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 the chief or the, the local leader Said that we know we trust you Christians. If you start a dairy production farm, we will support you. And the reason he says why they trust would trust them is because of the challenges that they have in India, where milk is watered down, um, cow's milk is watered watered down and sold, and in some cases it's watered down and even paint is added to the milk to thicken it so that it kind of looks like the original milk that has been sold. And so obviously that also affects people's health. Uh, and these are things that are ha happening. So what we are seeing happening now in South Africa is atrocious. It shouldn't be happening. Uh, we have, for example, the South African Bureau of Standards and very mm. clearly certain health standards have to be adhered to and have to be kept because where those standards are broken and not kept, people are at risk of losing their lives. But this will not happen under the ACDP, as our president has said. Ladies and gentlemen, when we start campaigning vigorously and aggressively, we are going to guide you in what promises you should make with a definite emphasis, knowing that it is going to be so. We will not lie to people, definitely. What we say is what we'll do. So we are going to promise people clean, healthy food. We are going to more than double the number of inspectors that they have, okay? Um, now the question here is, is the problem spaza shops, expired food, or what? Good question.
There's nothing wrong with the brick and mortar. Spaza shop is just brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. But you also have expired food in there, and you also have food that has been manufactured by these foreign nationals mm -hmm. and no healthy standards. So we want to make sure that all our shops, particularly spaza shops, particularly the most vulnerable, the poor, who are the ones who depend on them, get good nutritious food. All right. So, ACDP, one promise is that we are not going to have poisonous food in our shops. Mm -hmm. We are not going to have any human being sleeping in a shop where food is sold because they don't bring in mattresses. They sleep on these bags of millimeter. That is wrong, mm -hmm. and we're going to bring that to an end. They don't have toilet facilities in there. What do they use? Because at night, they will not go outside. They are scared to go outside. So we are going to ensure that South Africans get good food. Now, obviously, we did not want to spend much more time on, on videos, but there is. I'm going to next week, maybe we will touch on this issue for the last time, so that people will not say, fact check. There's fish that is made in the laboratory. You must see it. Mm. Okay. There is red meat. Now, anybody who says, no, this cannot be true with red meat, that you're going to eat meat that comes from the laboratories. The question is, why are some governments buying off land from the farmers? Mm -hmm. Some of them are pushing them out. We have seen massive demonstrations. We have seen the demonstrations from Canada. Mm -hmm. Canadian farmers in town, in the cities, with all their equipment. Mm. We have seen Netherlands. Netherlands. We have seen Australia yeah. protesting. Mm. Why? Because they are saying governments want to kill them. And mm. South African farmers should be the most uh, protected mm. farmers in the world. And those who left, when they see how the new government, the godly government, is going to deal with farmers, they will come back. We, South Africa has had some of the best farmers. Absolutely. Some of the best farmers. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing I can say about the Afrikaners, those who say a burmaga plan, elekana plan mark, farming, they know how to farm. Yeah. They enjoy farming. So we want to ensure that all those people who enjoy farming, whether they grew, grew up in the township, whether wherever they grow, they grew up, we want to ensure that we have good, healthy food. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. ACDP bringing solutions to our people. That is why it's, it will be good for you to continually say what the DP has been saying. South Africa <laughs> needs the yes. ACDP. And the ACDP needs yeah. you. All right. Now, we're, what we are going to do next, um, there is spy legislation, spy bill in the making, mm. you'd be surprised. You'd be shocked what government is planning to do. We want you to know this. So that when you say South Africa needs the ACDP, ask all the pastors and the churches, which party, whose politician can give you this information? Mm. Who? If we don't tell them, nobody will tell them. If we don't tell them, nobody will tell them, mm. okay? Remember, we lost as Ascension Day. We did not, I, until today, I don't know how it happened. Mm. And then after losing Ascension Day, I prayed and said, Lord, please, Christmas and Good Friday should not go without you warning us. Mm -hmm. The Lord warned us. We did something about it. That's why we still have Christmas and Good Friday on our calendar. Next month, we'll be celebrating Christmas. Tell all the people it's because of the ACDP. Yeah. All right? It's because of the ACDP. So, Honorable Steve Swart is going to lead us with this one. What are they planning to do? What is the intelligence department, intelligence officers, planning to do with those who want to start new ministers? Okay, Honorable Steve, tell our. Good evening, people. President. Good evening, President, and okay. good evening, DP and ACDP family. It's an honor to join the platform. 
and just to commend our president and DP um, today for speaking out so strongly in Parliament. It was a very feisty time on the Israel issue. Thank you for defending Israel, President and DP. You did very, very well. Let me quickly touch on the spy bill, as the president alluded to. And it's a very strangely worded bill. It's the General Intelligence Laws Amendment Bill. This bill purportedly is to follow the recommendations of the Zondo Commission and the Mufamidi Commission into dealing with the intelligence, the spies of South Africa. Now, that sounds very good, and we know the Zondo Commission made a number of recommendations about our intelligence services, about the spies in South Africa. But when you look closely at this General Intelligence Laws Amendment Bill, there are one or two very startling and very concerning issues here which every single pastor in South Africa needs to be aware of, and we as the ACDP are sounding the alarm. The first issue relates to the definition of national security. Now, this is widely abused in many countries where very heavy draconian bills are passed to enforce um, a state view under the guise of national security. So the definition of national security, one's got to look at very carefully. And this traditionally is a very narrow definition, and here we see it is very broad. But what is even more concerning is, viewers, you will not believe this, but there is a clause in this bill requiring that every person, every pastor that wishes to start a church or any person which, who wishes to establish a non-governmental organization must get security clearance from the state security services. Now, that's straight out of communist Russia. I cannot believe that they put something like that in a bill. And how dare they want to tell South Africans, which are predominantly Christian, that if you want to start a church or an NGO, a charitable institution, that you have to get a security clearance from the spies, from the very ANC government. That is deplorable, President. This is something we will oppose and we will fight this. It has been dealt with in an ad hoc committee of parliament. They've just started the process, but we will not accept this clause and we will make sure that this clause does not go through. And if it does go through parliament, where the ANC will try to push it through, we will make sure that we litigate on this issue and fight it to the bitter end. But it's very important, President, that all our viewers alert pastors, alert all people that are involved in charitable organizations that want to start those organizations, that this is what is viewed. I don't understand how it can be implemented because at this stage, you would have vetting, security vetting for your government officials at high levels. And even today, we were dealing with the National Prosecuting Authority. We were discussing the issue of security vetting for top investigators, not a pastor, or a person that wants to lead a cell group church at home. But is it not, President, reminiscent of China that is having a lockdown on the churches, as we know for many, many years, that they've been really exerting pressure. And we see the underground church in China as a result of government oppression. So that briefly, President, is what is intended by this bill, the vetting of pastors, of anyone starting a non-government organization. We do not accept this. We will reject this. Thank you, President. Um, Steve, please uh, explain for the sake of those who might not understand what security vetting means. You, you will have to fill in a lengthy document with your CV, with uh, family details, banking details, every form of detail, and that then is submitted to the state security agencies, to the spies. And then there's a process where they um, will investigate that. They might phone your family members. I, I once went through a security vetting and they contacted references um, and it's an in-depth investigation as to whether you should get a security clearance at a high level. And that normally is for a high ranking state official, such as a, a, a top prosecutor or a top investigator or the Hawks investigators that require 
because they did him with top secret information. So you need a top secret or a secret clearance. In this case, why should a pastor need a top secret or a secret vetting to start a church? It doesn't make sense to me. It's illogical and it is a draconian measure which we do not accept. I agree with you, sir. It is definitely draconian. We don't agree with that and we are going to reject that. Um, one thing that is possible is that when they call people as references, they might easily and deliberately call their friends who will claim to know you well. And they will say, no, this is not a good man. I know him. He has done that and that and that so that we don't get the opportunity. They can do that. So it is something that we should never allow to happen. And uh, we know that Jesus said in Matthew 18, 18, whatever we prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven. Whatever we permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Now, you know that when you apply for a passport, they can easily say, this man does not qualify to get a passport. Why? Because in our during our investigations, we come across this and this and this and this. This is a dangerous man. I'm sure you agree with us. Yeah. Say. This is a dangerous man. You cannot give him a passport. Mm -hmm. You cannot allow him to, to start to have a gathering of people. He'll influence them negatively. Mm -hmm. I mean, people like ourselves, they will say we influence people. We are fundamentalists. Right? <laughs> people call us some fundam fundamentalists. If you believe in the scriptures, if you believe in the Bible, you are called a fundamentalist and you are dangerous for believing the Bible. No, it's, it's clearly a, a fairly dangerous move. And I think that this is something that we within the ACDP and the general public, the churches, need to rise up and need to, not to be asleep uh, on, on this particular watch. But very clearly, there's a move here that seems to be also wanting to uh, to control and to manipulate the church. Uh, it cannot happen on our watch. We've seen how this happens in other countries, your socialist and communist nations. Uh, we cannot allow South Africa to go down the same particular route. Uh, my brother, who uh, was visiting a particular country, um, had to go through a vetting process. And he was concerned because they went as far back as our grandparents. They wanted to know information about where our grandparents were born, where our parents were born, who their brothers and their sisters were. So he felt as if he was being made vulnerable. But this is the extent to which uh, certain vetting processes can actually go. And the information is not necessarily even to do with the church or with the NPO, but more to do about controlling uh, and manipulating a particular individual. So, uh, President, as Steve indicated, um, we've got to fight this tooth and nail until the bitter end. When this matter is discussed, we will call pastors in Cape Town uh, to, to meetings where we will inform them and remind them that we do not have the words secular state in the constitution. Yeah. Because when we rounded them up, when we invited them, we said, pastors, please don't allow this to happen. Pastors in Cape Town rose up and they say, that's what, so we want the same thing to happen with this one. And I believe by the grace of God, this thing will not see the light of day in Jesus. Yes. Okay. This man, <coughs> my co-pilot, did well this afternoon. That's always. Mm. He did well because the Minister of International Relations, Me Naledi Pandu, made a statement about what's happening in the Middle East. You know, friends, we are dealing with people who are not honest. They say one thing and they do the opposite. Mm. They cannot be trusted. Mm. I am surprised by... Christians who are still believing these people. You know, before 1994, they promised fridges. You vote for us, you're going to get a fridge, you're going to get the microwave. Uh, Until today, I haven't met anybody who got those things. Uh, okay. They still make promises. Mm. And people still believe them. Mm. All right. The Lord is able to remove the veil and the blindness on them to start seeing reality, to start seeing the truth. So, today she made a statement. 
about um, the latest developments in uh, the Middle East and also why they recall uh, the South African diplomats to come back home. Now they said to consult. Mm. They are calling them back home to consult, consult with them. Mm. All right. Now I said last night on the during the interview, I don't mind the consultation if indeed it does take place. Mm. But the DPK today came with a different angle, which is true. Yeah, I agree with him. Okay. Mm. So there is no contradiction between what I said last night on uh, channel 405 and what he said this afternoon. Okay. So I want him to tell us uh, what he thinks about what they are claiming mm. about what they think the solution is and why, why they are not objective. Mm. They definitely are not objective. Sure. They condemn Israel while they call their friends Hamas. <laughs> they, they discuss with Hamas and Hamas tell them, guys, do this and this and this. And I'm sure they do that. Yeah. But over to you, sir. Well, thank you, President. I, I think firstly, very clearly, um, if one wishes to have a peaceful settlement, a negotiated settlement, then the person that is doing the deliberations and the, 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 the so-called peace broker mm. has to be unbiased and has to be a person that the different sides trust. What South Africa has done by recalling our diplomats from Tel Aviv, Israel, is revealing their unbiased position by saying almost in a sense that they favor Hamas uh, as opposed to uh, the, 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 the state of Israel. So it becomes a bit of a problem for South Africa now to be an honest broker. Remember that South Africa indicated that they would not take positions when it came to r the Russian invasion of Ukraine and that they would rather take a position, a middle of the road position so that they could be a peace broker. But this certainly is not happening with, with Israel and, and Hamas. I think when, when one looks at Hamas as well, um, and the, one of the reasons given for recalling the, uh, the diplomats was the fact that um, in, in Israel, uh, what, is, what is currently taking place, uh, they say, is, 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 not, is not acceptable, uh, and that Israel has also broken international law. Now, there was silence, uh, President, silence when uh, Hamas firstly attacked Israel. The South African government mm. was absolutely silent. There was no immediate condemnation yeah. of international law that was broken when, when children were murdered, when women were raped and murdered, when the elderly and the infirm uh, and civilian, civilian men uh, were, were murdered and f whole families were murdered and over 200 hostages uh, were taken captive by Hamas. Now, that is a contravention of international law. Now, surprisingly, for the first time in Parliament, we heard uh, the minister uh, indicating that they also condemn uh, Hamas for the first time. Uh, yeah. We've heard this actually mm -hmm. uh, being said uh, that that the, the ruling party uh, condemn Hamas. But they, when it came to, when it comes to Israel, they say that this is extended. It's going way above uh, the response of Israel. is almost exaggerated, uh, and so. But this is also hypocritical. Uh, I mentioned the, the the point that out in South Darfur, in Sudan, you also have the Janjaweed who have massacred, massacred thousands of uh, civilians in Sudan. And the reason why these uh, um, Arab is Islamists have killed them is purely because of the color of their skin. And they use the Arab word, which means slave, that these are not uh, our people, they are slaves. And there is silence, silence from the international community, silence from those who are, who are pro-Palestinian uh, uh, and, and pro-Hamas. Uh, but here we have these atrocious acts that are taking place and silence. But the other aspect, President, is the fact that um, they are saying that uh, Israel 
uh, only became a nation in 1948, uh, as if Israel had no claim to the land prior to that. And so I raised the point that some 4,100 years ago, um, Israel had claim to the land when God called Abraham from the Ur of the Ch Chaldeans to a land that he had promised to yeah. give to Abraham. And then some 3,000 100, 200 years ago, we see the, the nation Israel being established when Saul became king and th then followed by David, the greatest king that Israel ever had. And so very clearly, we can see that the nation Israel has claim prior to 1948 yeah. to the nation, to, to Israel uh, as, as a land. But, but then I think also, President, people don't also know and understand that the Hamas charter, the charter or the uh, the covenant that Hamas actually has, a part of their covenant is the killing of Jews. Yeah. So Hamas actually calls for the genocide, calls for the killing of Jews. But what many people also don't know, in some of their chants, they say first the people of the Saturday, that's the Jews, and then the people of the Sunday. Yeah. Now this is chilling. Um, what they are saying is they will go for the destruction and the killing of Jews, and then they call for the destruction and the killing of Christians. This is Hamas. It is a terrorist group. We actually do not have any challenges with the ordinary Palestinian people who want peace. The problem is with Hamas that uses individuals and uses the Palestinians as human shields. Hamas has to be dealt with um, in order for there to be a peaceful settlement within the Middle East. And so essentially, uh, that was the angle that I took. And um, I, I, I certainly hope that it resonates. And I believe that it does resonate with the vast majority of South Africans. And so we call, we do call for peace in the Middle East. We are obviously very saddened. Uh, and disturbed by the very many innocents on both sides of the war that have lost their lives. And as the ACDP, we are calling for the international community, our government, and we as the ACDP also will do everything possible to bring both sides to the table called peace so that there can be a negotiated settlement. But we know also who is our peace bearer, the one who brings peace that this world does not know and cannot comprehend. Uh, and so we call on the Prince of Peace also to intervene in this in this situation. Thank you very yeah. much. As, as um, the DP correctly said, we are also feeling the pain when we see innocent people, innocent children, innocent women, sickly people uh, being caught in the conflict yeah. and also losing their lives. Mm. Now, here is a challenge. Israel is being condemned. The IDF is condemned because in the process of them bombing uh, hideouts of Hamas, innocent lives mm. are lost. They are playing with the figures. Mm. Women and children talk about 1,000, 4,000, this and they are playing with the figures. But here is a practical problem and question that I want to give to you. ACDP people, you need to come with solutions. Okay. What is the solution? If a terrorist hides behind women and children, mm. put women and children in front of him, or even shoots rockets mm. into Israel from a hospital. A hospital. Mm. Okay. We are told that hospital. Mm grounds are used by Hamas. Mm. Schools are used by Hamas. UN property, UN buildings are used by Hamas. Mm. They say in the basement of hospitals, that's where their headquarters are. Mm. That's where their meeting place are, mm. where they're playing. Now, if obviously Israel gets intelligence that uh, they are meeting uh, in this hospital, in the uh, basement of this hospital, and they want to shoot mm. in that direction without being told that the hospital is full of patients. Mm. What do you do? How can you resolve this problem? Help us. Mm. How can you resolve this problem? Mm. The second question I want to ask you. Mm. 
there are hostages, more than 200, who are arrested. Israel, I don't know how come that it took them so long mm. to detect the many tunnels underground. They say hospitals, no, the hostages are hidden in underground the in the tunnels. Now, they can't bomb the tunnels. Mm. And they also say, some people are also saying, there are booby traps. They put traps all over, uh, and these uh, tunnels are like a network, mm. okay? Sophisticated network. Mm. Some people are even saying they are 5,000 kilometers long, if they are placed sure. one after the other. Mm. So it's a lot of work. Israel want to get at them. Mm. They can't. These people are in these places. To reach them is a challenge because they are booby traps and uh, they are soldiers, mm. terrorists, waiting for them in some corners. So it is a massive challenge. Mm. I want to ask you if you have an idea, please send it. Our address, our email address is online. You will see that, please give us ideas because as ACDP, we want to provide solutions. Email your questions to or your proposals to info at acdp.org.za. That is how far we are going with this mecca. We want solutions. We want interaction. We want to hear from you. So those who say ACDP MPs are unreasonable, what they are saying in parliament is unreasonable, understand. He said it, mm. that for as long as Hamas is alive, mm. Israel is in trouble. Yeah. The Palestinians are, are in trouble. Mm. We have been told for some time, and the media doesn't report on this, that Hamas and the Palestinian Authority are at war themselves. Mm. They are fighting among each other. Because now the Palestinian Authority is very upset with what Hamas is doing. Mm. But the international community does not say much about all right, until we hear from you, we are going to leave, we are going to pack this issue of Israel. For as long as the bombings continue, bombings continue, bombings continue, we need to try and find the solution. And if we can get a master, master solution, a, and a best solution, we will use the right channel to say, guys, please consider this, because we believe if we do this, we are going to uh, save more lives. Now, People have been asking questions. We went to public hearings uh, that were discussing the Bella Bill. We made proposals. We sent in emails. We objected. And uh, but Parliament passed the bill because the ANC has the majority. And people have been asking the question. What are we going to do now about this matter? What are we going to do? Is it over? Have we failed? Honorable Marit Sukers, who has been leading the fight for the parents who have the right over their children, is here with us tonight. And she's going to tell us what next, what steps should we take? Should we give up? Or are we going to say, though a righteous man fails seven times, what does he do? He rises again. So we never accept defeat. We are not called to be defeated. We are called to win. Even if it takes us some months, we go back, we go back until we win. So, Mary, what ideas and what advice you are giving our people tonight? Yes, good evening, Mr. President, good evening, DP, and good evening to our ACDP family all around the country uh, that is joining us tonight. Indeed, Mr. President, as the DP indicated, the bill was passed in the National Assembly uh, by ANC majority, um, I should say boosted by the IFP and the EFF numbers in Parliament. Uh, the ANC on the day, it should be noted, that some of the MPs were not present for the vote. It's very interesting. And that the, uh, the, the voting of the IFP and the EF obviously gave them the majority 
that they need to pass this bill. And this is also very important for our ACDP family that is out there, our supporters and our members to remember why the 2024 elections are so important because the year is where you see how the legislative reality laws that are made in your country that will define um, your life and in this case the education sector and the lives of your children for the years to come is determined by the number of votes of the very representatives that either carries your values and your principles and your worldview that defines that their numbers within the legislature, in this case, the National Assembly. So yes, it was passed with a majority, but that is the first step in um, the bill becoming law. Uh, it, it is in the lower house. Um, I think our uh, one of the, the, one of the um, uh, presentations we should do, Mr. President, is people to understand the road of lawmaking or the journey of bills and legislation as it finally becomes law. So the National Assembly is the lower house. Of course, the National Council of Provinces, that is where the law is going to before the president signs it into law. So in terms of public participation, there is a second round of public participation that would be opened in the National Council of Provinces when the bill is before that committee. And the ACDP will definitely keep our constituents and South Africa abreast of the developments as it goes to the NCOP. We should also note that we do not have representation in the National Council of Provinces. But so our strategy strongly is to use again the same and an upscale strategy, I should say, to use civil society, civil organizations, and uh, the general public to mobilize them to ensure that their voices are heard in the National Council of Provinces when the public is open there. Um, then from the National Council of Provinces, uh, what we know is that the ANC is, uh, is absolutely uh, determined to push the ballot bill through so they will use their majority, again, bolstered by the EFF and the IFP support, most likely the National Council of Provinces, to push this bill through. Now, our people may ask, so why should we bother uh, to go into a public participation process? There is our constitution gives weight to the voice of the public, the democrat. We are in a participatory dem democracy. It means that every voice has value and must be given meaning, meaning every House of Parliament must consider the voices of people in making the laws. And the way in which they need to give weight to it is when deliberations happens in committee and the public make their views known on any piece of legislation. It is the duty of Parliament to then with an open mind, engage the public's, uh, public's views and consider them in the relation to the laws that they wish to pass. Now, this is where we speak of the constitutionality of, of the public participation process that the A, our committee that I serve on, has embarked on. Did they, in fact, do that? Did they give weight to the public's comment? And the ACDP were pains to ensure that not only we fight for the process to have integrity in line with the Constitution, but also that our objections, the gaps that we noted in the process, the lack of efficiency, and where we requested for an enhancement of process, that that be on the record. Why? Because if Parliament fails in its duty, to its constitutional duty, then South Africans have the, the opportunity to take matters to court where the judiciary needs to then make a, an announcement or look at what parliament has done, whether they have done justice to the constitution process. So what we have done, Mr. President and DP, is we have continuously in this process um, highlighted where we believe the committee has not done their constitutional duty. And I should add uh, that please take note of the judgments 
where the court from parliament wanting, where laws were passed and the public uh, views were not properly considered by parliament. And this is how important it is. Our constitution gives weight to the voice. So your public participation ensures that one, lawmakers gives consideration for your views, two, that if they do not do that, it gives us the opportunity to legally fight um, legislation that has not um, meet requirements of the constitution in terms of public participation. So again, lastly, the bill now goes to the NCOP. It will open public comment. The ACDP do not have pre a presentation in the NCOP. Again, I highlight this, especially for our supporters, because every single vote in the 2024 election counts. It is so important for us to ensure that we get the provincial votes and that we get the national votes, because that ensures us that we have a seat at the table and that the Christian worldview is defended in both the lower and the higher house houses of parliament, that is the National Assembly and the NCOP. So yes, the bill goes from us, the NA, it's finished, it was voted on, it goes to the NCOP, you have another opportunity there to make your voice known. And we have called on, uh, if this, if this uh, bill goes signed into law, we have called on civil organizations to support um, the, the legal action against this bill because the NA has made a huge failure of giving voice to public comment. Mr. President. Thank you very much, um, Honorable Sugars. Um, somebody wrote, said, we are proud of you. You have worked very hard. Mm. Um, it's Charlotte, we are proud of you. You gave your best to stop the Bella Bill. Yeah. Okay, and uh, obviously we agree with uh, those sentiments, it is true. You have done your best and we submit you for that. Mm. Now, I'm looking at the time, uh, something happened on Saturday night. Um, we want to show you something about that, but maybe not tonight because of time. And uh, these two gentlemen, these two pilots, uh, are struggling to keep their eyes open. It has been a long, hot day. And there's a result. For the first time this year, I went to the bathroom, took water, and just splashed my face because I, I didn't have toothpicks to put uh, my eyes to keep my eyes open, you know? So, but uh, we are delighted that you are participating with us. So, next week, uh, Tuesday, we'll give you news that will be a week old, but there's something called the Legends Award. Legends Award. So it happened on Saturday night. We'll tell you more about it next week. But thank you, very, excuse me. Thank you very much for participating tonight. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for being part of trying to restore this South Africa that is now declining and sinking to make sure that we become a great, great nation that will be a blessing to the nations of the world and that will be a model nation, okay? Email your comments to info at acdp.org.za. From me, uh, I say, Hambani gaase, Samayani handle, Toxins. DB. Well, well, it must be say congratulations to our president. You'll hear more about it next week in terms of the award, but hearty congratulations. And in closing, remember, South Africa needs the ACDP and the ACDP needs you. Good night and God bless. Good night and God bless. I emphasize, South Africa needs the ACDP.